What's the third leading cause of death in the United States behind heart disease and cancer? Let me just tell you a little bit of some statistics here. 250,000 people in the U.S. die each year because of medical errors, making it the third leading cause of death in this country behind heart disease and cancer, according to a Johns Hopkins study. And of those, seven to 9,000 people die each year in the U.S. due to medication errors. A Mayo Clinic survey of almost 6,700 physicians in the U.S. found that over 10% reported making a major medical error in the past three months. I'll list all of these articles below. Although medication errors can be caused by all members of the healthcare team, LPNs, RNs, pharmacists, physicians, anesthesia, nursing medication errors are the most common the reason is that nurses execute the majority of medical orders and spend about 40% of their time in the hospital administering medications. And I would say if you are in a um, long-term care facility, it's probably much more than 40% of your time that you're administering medications. The most common cause of medication errors, when you look it up, it is at this current time, issues revolving communication. So th this communication goes across the board and it is not just the medical team, it's the patients as well. So communication errors, here's some examples, rectal versus oral, not understanding how to do it, too embarrassed to ask, so you give it to yourself the wrong way. You take it incorrectly. You're crushing that medication instead of taking it whole or vice versa. That changes everything about that medication. That's a medication error. Allergies that weren't communicated or discussed, either from the medical team to the patients or from the patients to the medical team or when medication is picked up from the pharmacy you have any um, allergies no not really turmeric but i didn't think that counted whatever it might be communication is a big one it is the most common cause how about getting interrupted if you are a medical provider and you're trying to uh, dose the medication properly mix it properly um, take care of the chemo get ready to hang a blood product and you're getting interrupted so staff interruptions um, are a big problem in medical facilities many patients Regarding the patient communication issue, many patients don't understand their medication and don't ask for various reasons. If you have a loved one in a hospital, in a long-term care facility, etc., ask questions. It's okay to ask questions. What is this medication? What's it for? How many of us know people that say, um, I don't know, I take a red pill for that, or it's a square or oval white pill. It starts with a P, I think. Um, a lot of people just don't know their medication. They don't properly know their diagnosis. They don't know why they're getting medication. So when they come into other facilities, it's really difficult to communicate that. Another study, um, Mayo Clinic survey, was done and found that patients being discharged from the hospital, um, only 28% could list their medications. 42%, so less than half of people getting out of the hospital could actually name and describe what their diagnosis is. Why? Wrong dose, wrong medication, wrong route, wrong, wrong patient. Besides asking questions, family members, please ask questions. Uh, patients, please ask questions. Caregivers, please ask questions. Another thing to remember um, that's listed to try to eliminate medication errors has to do with one provider and one pharmacy. Now that's gotten better because now the um, system, the computer systems have been, are talking to each other, but it was a lot worse years ago when, and it still can happen, where you can go to a couple different pharmacies and three different physicians and two different ERs and things get really mixed up and communication problems occur, which trickles down to medication errors that are occurring occurring from there. Using the measuring tools, don't guess. If uh, you are to give 0.2 cc's or milliliters of something, you want to use the proper tool for that and not guess what it might be because 0.2 is really tiny and it might, what looks like one person's or one teaspoon looks like a different one teaspoon to another person and a medication error can easily uh, occur from that. Keep a list of your medications and al allergies along with the proper diagnosis. Always, always read the label. Don't rely on the color or the shape. If you're working as a uh, an LPN or RN and you're distributing medications to say you're at a camp, you're at a school, you're at a, uh, you're again, a prison nurse, you're working in an adult family home, not just a clinic or a hospital. 
we do, it's easy to have a conversation every single day with the same people, the same patients. It, you still have to read the label. That's just a reminder to all of us when we distribute medication out to patients. Uh, I'm gonna read that label three times and make sure this is the right dose, right medication, right route, and for sure the right patient. It's the responsibility of the different layers that are put in place of the institution that the medical person works in to have those layers in place to try to omit or mitigate medication errors, although it still happens. And it's, uh, it's a really sad and unfortunate situation. It's sad, of course, and awful for the patient, for the patient's family, if it results in uh, a, a very adverse outcome or results in death. I want to tell you about two nurses, and you probably have heard about them, but this is just two examples here of medication errors that occur um, from experienced, seasoned, good nurses working at good medical institutions. And one of them I knew about very closely because I worked at a facility close by where she worked, and her name is Kim Hyatt. She worked at Seattle Children's Hospital, and she was an RN for 27 years. She worked in the neonatal ICU, or called NICU, and she's a very good nurse, good mother, good partner, wonderful human being. She made a mistake. Here's what we mean by wrong dose. Kim was supposed to give a 140 milligram dose of calcium chloride, but instead she accidentally gave 1.4 grams. So she gave 10 times stronger dose, a 10 times stronger dose of that medication to a critically ill eight-month-old infant. Now, this was in September of 2010. And I just remember this situation so well because she's a seasoned RN. She didn't mean to do this. She apparently was interrupted. That's what the story was. She was dosing and calculating. And um, is that an excuse? I'm not giving an excuse for medication errors. I'm just giving some facts here on how these things can so easily happen. This baby died, and um, Kim was very, very hard on herself. That's an understatement. Guilt, shame, embarrassment. She was immediately escorted out of the hospital. She was fired. The Board of Nursing also was involved, and um, I can't remember what it was called at that time, but basically probation. But her guilt and shame, and uh, because she knew that family and she felt so terrible about her error that shortly after the death of this baby, she died, and she died by suicide. There's a lot of situations that can occur, like I said, for medication errors or medication mistakes and issues that can go on. Uh, another nurse in 2017, you guys probably remember about her, she was in the news a lot, Redonda Vaught, she was a Vanderbilt University Medical Center registered nurse. She accidentally pulled from the medication uh, dispense cart where you have to put in a patient's name, put in your number or your badge, there's other different types of carts, but it was that kind of a cart. And she accidentally pulled out Vecuronium. Instead, she meant to get Versed. So she was charged criminally negligent homicide and abuse of an impaired adult. And uh, that's another example of another nurse, and there are many. I also watched a, a fascinating trial not too long ago of a physician who worked at a prominent medical center who felt that giving very, very high doses of a medication, fentanyl, to patients who were going to pass away anyway would ease their pain. Is that a medication error? Is that a mistake on judgment? Things happen all the time in hospitals, medical centers. We can just do the best that we can to keep all of those safeguards in place, to have the best policies that we have, and to communicate as patients to our provider, communicate to your family, communicate to your pharmacist. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Know what medications you are taking inside and out. And if you are a nurse dispensing medications, five, five rights, make sure that you're doing every single one of them. Don't skip. Don't become complacent. 
And if an error occurs, God forbid, don't be so hard on yourself. Try to understand that this is an error and um, do everything you can to to develop some coping skills, professional help, get coping skills to help with your feelings, whatever they are, when a medication error or medical error of some sort occurs. We're all here on this planet together, but medication errors are still happening and they still keep increasing, it seems, each year. If you're in your loved one, if your loved one is in the hospital, be an advocate for them. Be a partner with the medical team so that everybody is in this together for the best outcome for that patient. 